Well, good morning to everybody and welcome to Sport Rock. Uh, I don't know about you all, but uh, this is an exciting day for me, finally, uh, after a long year. There is finally a very bright light uh, at the end of this long tunnel. So thank you all so much for joining us today. I, I uh, have had the opportunity to tour Sport Rock with Lillian. Uh, this business started back in 1994 and has grown to what we see here today, a, another site also here in, in Northern Virginia, 40,000 square feet of just elevated rock climbing uh, opportunities here. As a matter of fact, uh, President Lillian, uh, while she was taking us around, asked Mr. President and I if we'd like to display some of our talents uh, <laughs> of rock climbing uh, today. And uh, because of time constraints, we're going to do that another, <laughs> another day. But I want you to all join me and give a round of applause for the President and the First Lady of the United States of America. Thank you so much for being with us today. It is truly an honor, and I want to also acknowledge that Dr. Biden, who is one of my fellow state employees, we are so grateful <laughs> that you are teach here in Virginia at Northern Virginia Community College. So please welcome the first lady. As you probably know, there are a number of dignitaries here with us today, and I. I'd like to give it my best attempt at recognizing some of them. We have Congressman Jerry Connolly. Jerry, thank you for being with us today. My favorite Lieutenant Governor, Congressman Don Beyer, welcome. Senator George Barker, I saw in the audience. Senator, good to see you this morning. Senator Adam Evan, thank you very much for your leadership. We have the speaker, the first woman speaker of the House of Delegates, uh, Speaker Eileen Phillip. One. Welcome, Eileen. And our leader in the uh, House of Delegates, Charnel Heron. Charnel, welcome. Our Mayor, Justin Wilson, is here with us today. Justin. Now we have numerous members of our local council and school board. Thank you all so much for being here and your leadership over this past year. And finally, Superintendent uh, Greg Hutchins for helping to put all this together. Thank you. It is also great uh, to see all the students with us today and teachers. They have joined us from schools right here in Alexandria, and I want to tell everybody that this past 14 months have no doubt been a very difficult and unprecedented time for our students, our teachers, and school staff. They have literally made sacrifices, and they are our heroes, and on behalf of all of us, please thank our teachers, our staff, and our students. Today, we mark a tremendous milestone in our fight against COVID-19. As of 12.01 this morning, for the first time since March 2020, there are no limits on capacity or distancing in Virginia's restaurants, businesses, offices, or other venues. That's something that we can all be proud of. We are closer to a more normal life than we have been in the past 14 months. And I don't know about for you, but for me, that feels really good. For this, we can thank the vaccines and the scientists and researchers who developed them. We are now roughly six months into the vaccine rollout. And I'm proud to say that 66% of Virginia adults have had their first shot. 54%, more than half of Virginians, are fully vaccinated, which puts us 14th amongst all states and ahead of other states in the South. <laughs> 
Those are tremendous numbers, and I'm fully confident that Virginia will hit President Biden's goal of 70 percent of adults getting their first shot by July the 4th. We can see, yes. We can see in real time that the more people get vaccinated, the fewer people get COVID. It is very simple math. Our case counts have been dropping for weeks. Six weeks ago, we had an average of over 1,600 new cases per day. Today, we have an average of fewer than 400 new cases a day, numbers we haven't seen since April of 2020. Our daily new infection rate is the ninth lowest in the nation and third lowest east of the Mississippi. Our hospitalizations and deaths are dropping as well. This is a direct result of people getting vaccinated. I am grateful to every Virginian, including those 12 and older, who have done the right thing and gotten the shot. We are focused on making sure that getting a vaccine is as, is as easy as possible for every Virginian. And where communities are harder hit by the virus or have more barriers to access, we make extra effort. We want everyone to be able to get the shot. We are also just so grateful to President Biden and his administration. We are able to kick off summer enjoying the things that we have always cherished thanks to your leadership sir and focus on increasing production of vaccines getting to the states and finally getting shots in arms as governor i can tell you that having a partner in the white house makes a huge huge difference setting clear goals as he has done and supporting us with the resources we need to meet those goals. And as a doctor, I know it also makes a big difference when leadership respects science and follows its lead. Yeah. Finally, this weekend, as you all know, is Memorial Day. Lifting the capacity and distancing restrictions will make a big difference for those businesses relying on holiday travelers. But we cannot forget the purpose of Memorial Day, to honor those military service members who have made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom. This weekend, please, please take the time to remember them and their sacrifice and to comfort their families. All of our service members deserve that. Thank you all so much. Jacob. It is my honor to introduce President Biden. Welcome to Virginia, Mr. President and our First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Dr. Biden, you are no stranger to the city of Alexandria. You have taught here at the community college for many years. We are proud to have both of you here today. My name is Jacob Bosley, and I am a high school junior. I want to start by saying thank you to President Biden and Governor Northam. Because of the incredible work that has been done by your administrations, doctors, nurses, and volunteers all over the country, I'm able to be here today, fully vaccinated and without a mask. It feels great, and I'm really excited to get back to normal and enjoy my summer vacation. When this pandemic started, we all made sacrifices, especially students and young people. And our teachers and school administrators who are owed a debt of gratitude for all they have done for us students this past year. It's been a long year. For months, my brothers and I, my parents, we have masked up and kept our social distance to protect those who we love. 
and we are going to keep using good common sense, wear a mask in a large crowded area, keep our distance, and wash our hands for 20 seconds, just as Dr. Fauci said. And most importantly, get vaccinated. I've had my second shot, and it's a game changer. My school is back open, offering in-person learning. I'm playing sports and hanging out with my family and friends. With Memorial Day weekend here, I'm excited to go to the pool and go on vacation with my friends and family. Last but not least, I'm also excited to have a normal senior year of high school. This wouldn't have happened without Americans doing the right thing and getting vaccinated. And it definitely wouldn't have happened without the strong leadership behind our president, Mr. Biden. <laughs> president Biden, it is an honor to welcome you here to the Commonwealth of Virginia and to say thank you. Thank you. I don't know about y'all, but uh, following a governor, introducing the president in front of about half the legislature in the national press when I was a junior in high school, no, it wouldn't be close. <laughs> I just want you to remember me when you're president. When I go by, don't say Joe who, okay? Promise me? Before I begin, I'd like to say a quick word about a an old friend of mine. A uh, quick word about Senator John Warner. I had the privilege of serving with John for three decades in the United States Senate. And I can say without hesitation, he was a man of conscience and a man of honor. And in his life full of honors, the most enduring was his service to the people of Virginia. And we're going to miss him dearly. And, uh, you know, John took chances. I was stunned, pleased and stunned when, in the middle of my primary, John endorsed me for President of the United States. It was how things sort of used to be back in the old days in the United States Senate when I first got there. People — that wouldn't, didn't happen that often, but people would cross the aisle to work with one another. John was a man of great integrity, and, uh, and he's missed — going to be missed. And, Virginia was just fortunate to have him as long as they did. Now, Jacob, I want to thank you for sharing your story. And uh, I want to uh, — you pointed out that uh, my wife works for the governor. <laughs> no wonder she doesn't pay attention to me when I'm in around the governor. But all kidding aside, I'm very proud of the fact that Jill has — teaching is not what Jill does. Teaching is who she is. And she's done it her, uh, her whole adult life, and she's still doing it. I know some people said, when you're First Lady, are you going to continue to teach? She said, yes, but I don't think she bargained for having to teach online initially. You know, I, I — students, I watched her. She spent more time, four hours a day, for about a month, learning how to teach online. So don't feel bad about y'all having to do it. <laughs> I watched the teachers having to do it. At any rate, and uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, uh, we're in a position now, Governor Northam, I want to thank you for your welcome to the Commonwealth. And I want to thank you for all you're doing to help win the fight against COVID. You're one of the best governors in the country in taking this on. And you did it from the beginning. And uh, uh, Mayor Wilson, thanks for the passport into the city. I promise I'll leave in time, but thank you. And Congressman Connolly and Beyer, they are both members of Congress, but uh, uh, Congressman Connolly got to the Congress with a real impediment. He worked for me for years before that on my staff. And everything's gone downhill since you left here. Yeah, but thank you. And uh, I want to thank the Speaker as well, and the Senate Majority uh, Leader, uh, as well as uh, thank all of you working so hard for the people here 
in Northern Virginia. Four months after I took office, we're further along in this fight than anyone thought possible. Let's remember where we were 129 days ago. When I took office, we were averaging 184,000 cases per day nationwide. Here in Virginia, as the governor pointed out, schools were closed. Main Street had gone quiet here and in cities all across America. Virginia Tech didn't play in a bowl game this winter, first time in 28 years. And so many joys of life, large and small, had been halted by a long, dark winter. And today, we've gone from 184 cases per day nationwide to fewer than 22 cases, 22,000 cases per day. Deaths have dropped by over 85 percent. Tens of thousands of moms and dads, grandpops and grandmoms, brothers, sisters, neighbors, friends are still with us today who would otherwise have been lost. This has been true here in Virginia particularly. From 43,000 cases the week before I took office to fewer than 2,800 in the past week, a 93 percent decline. We've been able to do it for three reasons. First, we planned and executed a vaccination effort at a scale and speed never before seen here or anywhere in the world. Here in Virginia, that meant $247 million in federal funding for community vaccination sites. Over 360 federally funded National Guard members supporting the state's COVID-19 response. Getting doses to community health care centers. A thousand pharmacies all across Virginia, and creating a mass vaccination site in Norfolk, initially run by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the United States Navy in partnership with Virginia. Second reason that we succeeded is governors like Governor Northam have been instrumental partners, leaders in red states and blue states working with businesses, faith leaders, community groups to get it done at a local level. And thirdly, and most crucially, the American people. More than 165 million Americans so far have done their patriotic duty, 165 million, and gotten at least one shot. Americans of every party, every race, creed, have come together, rolled up their sleeves, literally, and done their part. Now, 51 percent of American adults have been fully vaccinated. 75 percent of seniors fully vaccinated, leaving nobody behind, black, white, Hispanic, across the world, across the board. They've been getting their vaccinations. In Virginia, 55 percent, as the governor said, of all adults are vaccinated. I believe that's the right number, Go, And look at what that means. We aren't just saving lives. We're getting our lives back. Stores and restaurants up and down Main Street are hanging open signs on their front doors. And here in the rock climbing gym, we're greeted by another, and we're greeting one another with smiles with our masks off. And I'm about to do this 60 foot wall, but we... <laughs> I tell you what, I work out every morning, but I said, I, I have trouble holding those grips then. And the young man said to me, he said, the way to work your hands, he said, get a kettlebell, a light one and just put it under your fingers and work it that way. Tonight, I'm trying. <laughs> but folks, look, in Norfolk and Fredericksburg, fans are, are, are heading back to the minor league ballparks. Pools and parks are opening up across the state. Families are heading down to spend Memorial Day weekend at Virginia Beach and all over the country. We've gone from pain and stagnation of a long, dark winter to an economy on the move growing faster than it has in nearly 40 years. From anemic job creation in the months before I took office to the fastest job creation in the first three months of any administration in American history, and rising wages, rising wages. As more Americans get vaccinated, the days grow brighter and brighter. But let me be clear, we're not done yet. We have to reach those who are not vaccinated and make it as easy as possible for them to get protected. I set an ambitious goal of getting 70 percent of adult Americans at least one shot by July the 4th. Today, just over a month 
to go, we're at 62 percent. Ten states have already reached the 70 percent milestone. Virginia 66 is moving closer every day. And continuing on all, counting on, on just all the help and continuing this process is really, I think you're going to get the job done here in Virginia pretty quickly, Gov. To 70 percent and keep sprinting through the finish line is what we're all about. If we succeed, we can celebrate our independence from the virus together on the 4th of July as we celebrate our independence as a nation. And the future is only going to get brighter because there will be no doubt what America can achieve when we do it together. I know when I ran for office, I said I wanted to do three things, one of which was to unite the country. It's difficult, but this is the first real evidence that we're able to do it. The American people are more ready to come together, I believe, than the Congress and the elected officials are. But we're getting there. If you aren't vaccinated yet, it's never been easier. If convenience is the issue, there are 80,000 locations. Visit vaccines.gov or text your zip code to 438829, and you'll find the sites nearest you. will pop up immediately. And in almost all cases, you don't need an appointment. If transportation is an issue, I want to thank Lyft and Uber. They've come forward, and they've offered free rides to and from vaccination sites through the July 4th. So anybody who says they can't get there, call Lyft or Uber. They're doing a patriotic thing. They'll come and pick you up, take you to the vaccination center, get you, wait for you, and take you back to your home or wherever you emerge from. And, you know, it costs is, is an issue. Don't let, don't be concerned. The vaccine is 100 percent free. And if time is an issue, there are 10,000 sites offering vaccinations without an appointment. 1,000 pharmacies in Virginia alone, and the vast majority offer no appointment, with no appointment required. We made extraordinary progress. Every American should be proud of what we've accomplished, and we did it together. But we still have five weeks left to hit our goal. You know, we, and I know we can do it. Just look at what we've done so far. There's not a single thing, and I've been saying this a long time, and I think a lot of the press are smart as the devil think I'm being naive. There's nothing we cannot accomplish if we do it together. I really believe that. Nothing, nothing, nothing we've ever set our mind to as Americans that we failed at when we've done it together. And Virginia, you know you're doing your part. So, you know, I remember always at here the uh, uh, in the last administration, I'd hear when they talk about vaccines and that uh, we're going to and we're going to make great progress. He said, "There's light at the end of the tunnel." I was reminded of my generation in the '60s. There was a very raunchy comedian who said, "Yeah, there's light." When he's talking about the Vietnam War, he said, "Yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel. It's a freight train." Well, this time there's sunlight at the end of the tunnel. There's real light. There's real light. And Gov, I really mean this. Not being political, you've done one hell of a job, Doc. You've done a hell of a job, and it matters. It matters. So I want to thank you all. God bless you. God protect our troops. And tell me, why aren't you full? Full off today? <laughs>